Janitorial Manager presents the Business of Cleaning podcast, the podcast that brings you the information you need to be successful in the cleaning industry. The Business of Cleaning podcast provides in-depth interviews with successful personalities from the commercial cleaning industry, as well as discussing the trending topics that matter to you and your organization. Welcome into the Business of Cleaning podcast, your number one source of information on the commercial cleaning industry. We record new episodes monthly live from the janitorial manager studio located in Toledo, Ohio. I'm Tim Clagg, the marketing communications specialist here at Janitorial Manager and your host of the Business of Cleaning podcast. Today, we welcome in the owner of Forte Commercial Cleaning, Jason Davis. They're based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Welcome to the program, Jason. We're so glad to have you. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Forte Cleaning has been making national news in the spotlight the last few months for their community involvement and inclusion. Congratulations on that national attention. Um, we're going to dive into that a little bit later, but I want to give you kudos right off the top for for that and your, your business. Thank you. So the first thing I want to discuss is your background, how you got involved in commercial cleaning, especially with an economics degree and a, uh, a prior background in banking. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Um, honestly, you know, like you said, I, I, I did, uh, you know, go to the university of Utah, I got a, my degree in economics. And after, uh, after that, I just kind of got right into banking. That's, you know, commercial banking, investment banking, um, just got really, really burned out with the nine to five, you know, office yeah. environment. Um, ended up leaving that. Just uh, you know, really quit pretty abruptly. Didn't really have a plan. Got my real estate license. <laughs> Did that for a while. And so once I got, um, you know, kind of in the independent world, um, started my wife and I just started looking at business opportunities. Um, she had a, a friend of hers. Um, did some commercial cleaning um, at, with some local businesses. And, and, you know, we just looked into it, you know, ran the numbers, lo looked at different types of businesses and, and felt like there were some good opportunities in the commercial cleaning space. And so that, that's kind of what led us into it. How scary is that going back, looking at that, like you said, kind of quitting abruptly, not yeah. having that plan B, you know, to, hey, well, tomorrow I'm going to I'm going to do this. How scary yeah. was that moment before you decided to get your real estate license and then have those discussions with your wife? Oh man, it was, yeah, it was pretty crazy. We were, you know, young and crazy. We already <laughs> had two kids, you know, we actually, I mean, when we got into it, when I uh, met, you know, who now is my, uh, one of our business partners, um, you know, we, we just really, really wanted to to do something and and uh, we we actually sold our house you know went all into it and uh i i think sometimes you know it's scary for sure um you know we definitely you know thought about that after we did it and, and uh, there are a few times we you know regretted it but it ended up working out okay so you yeah. know it's funny you mentioned uh your wife at her job of, of that particular time she had seen that the, the commercial cleaners that had owned the, the company that cleaned where she was employed had had some success. And you mentioned their partners. What do you remember the most, Jason, from those conversations that you were very confident walking away? This could be a, an avenue not only to start a business, but have a career, a longevity. Yeah, I mean, um, really one of the main things for us was, you know, the barrier uh, to entry, which was pretty low and other um, businesses, business models that we looked at, you know, required a lot more capital equipment, mm -hmm. just stuff we really didn't have access to, you know, just, you know, we, we were honestly pretty, pretty poor, you know, we were living, you know, paycheck to paycheck and just, just kind of, um, you know, and, and so that, that, that was the, one of the biggest things. And apart from that, just, um, you know, looking at the industry, um, we just felt like, you know, we could really, um, you know, we could do it, you know, if, if you're dedicated, there's lots of opportunities. Um, there's not any like 
major players. I mean, there's some big, big companies, but there's a lot of smaller, you know, mom and pop companies. And so we just felt like, you know, something that we could get into and, and do good at. So at this point, it's you and your wife, kind of the cleaners for your company. Yeah. Yeah. When we first started. So, so I met my uh, business partner, Jasper, him and his uh, partner, Eric actually started uh, Forte Commercial Cleaning um, back in 2008. And th th this was uh, 2016. Right. Um, and so we actually got into it by buying a master franchise at first um, for the Northern Utah area. And then in 2019 is when we actually ended up merging um, together with them to be business partners, you know, and part, part owners of Forte. Can you break down going back? Just, we talked about the, the startup capital, Thank break you. down the essential investments required, such as you mentioned, well, we didn't have enough for equipment. What equipment you put as a high priority supplies, what insurance and licensing fees that were required at the time when you guys said, you know what, it's not really that much of a capital that's really going to to hurt us on startup right so so i mean depending on on what you're you know what what you're looking at doing when we started we just started um i guess what you would call low-hanging fruit uh apartments you know we started doing a lot of apartment buildings which to do that i mean vacuum you know <laughs> right. a broom some 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 microfiber rags and, and cleaning chemicals it's not a lot a couple couple hundred bucks um our major expense was since we bought uh master franchise right so so we we wanted you know we needed some money and so so we 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 that's why we ended up actually selling our house and bought bought into something that already had some accounts running and so that way we were able to kind of you know we didn't have to reinvent the wheel you know just bought into something at first that was already functioning um and that worked out pretty well for us just to have a little bit of money from the from the start let's talk about that i find that very interesting sometimes and you know better you've seen situations in the banking industry where somebody has come in for what looks on paper like a sweet deal right yeah but, yeah you know <laughs> you've been there you've seen it you yeah, had yeah. some collateral in selling the house what weighed into that situation because obviously you're taking a, a, a big risk starting a company and if, if you take out an, a, a loan, like you know, there's another big risk involved. So can you kind of take us through that mindset and what led to you guys kind of deciding the best situation, the best choice for you guys was to sell that house? Ours, I mean, it was just, I, I think it was just pure motivation just to, 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 to be independent and, you know, be a business owner. When, when I was in school um, at, at the U, I did an internship with Salt Lake City. Uh, economic development. And I, I was part of their revolving loan fund, you know, working with small businesses, getting loans, helping startups. That's kind of in that, you know, with that energy, small business startup kind of energy. And we just really wanted to, to, to get, get back into that. You know, it's a really nice kind of feeling to the, the entrepreneurial, you know, uh, mm -hmm. feeling, you, you know, in, in that space. And, and we just, I, I, for for us, it was just you know we we had to do something you know I just I couldn't do the the office nine to five stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> we're talking to Jason Davis, owner of Forte Commercial Cleaning in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Forte, as you mentioned, it, cleaning started in Utah in 2016. You and your wife were making just under in our initial conversation. You said about five thousand a month. Now, yeah. fast forward. Eight years doesn't seem like a long time, but I'm sure, you know, like they say, the struggle is real at first. Fast forward those eight short years later, you were clearing, you were telling me around $525,000 now comfortably a month. How quickly for you guys, Jason, did you start to see that monthly revenue increase? I, I mean, it was slow at first, right? I mean, right off the bat, right when we started, we actually, like within the first month, we we lost one of the big uh, contracts that, that we had, um, you know, we were kind of counting on. So I actually, I, I had to pick up another job. I worked at the Walmart wow. distribution center um, 
you know, in three days, I worked 40 hours, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday <laughs> when we first started. So we, we actually got off to a really rough, rough start. But within the first year, you know, little by little, I think we picked up about $20,000 in accounts the first year, um, ended up get, getting some solid accounts. And it was actually in our second year when we had a huge opportunity to bid on a big manufacturing plant here in Utah. Um, at first I, you know, we didn't even want to bid on everything because we felt like it was too big for us, but, but we, you know, at the time they had different companies cleaning different parts of it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, let's bid on everything. And if we get just a little piece of it, that'll be great. You know? And then they ended up, uh, the, the buyer Barbara called me and she's like, well, we want you guys to do it, but we want you to do everything. And I was like, oh, well, wow. no, we can't, you know, we can't, we can't. She's like, well, it's all or nothing, you know? And so that, that was kind of what got us pushed us, you know, gave us that push. Yeah. And like I said, it was, you know, within the first two years, um, huge, huge, huge account. And then from there, you know, um, with that reference and everything really helped us grow and, and get some other pretty solid accounts. Do you think it's fair to say, like you said, in that first month, you lost one of the bigger contracts. Do you feel like that moment, that experience helped you to prepare for this nailing down this big contract in year number two? Oh yeah. Yeah. When I had that chance to bid that, I mean, we were so, you know, so motivated and just so focused on doing everything that we had to do to, to at least get a piece of that, you know? So I think that really, you know, the struggle that you, you have going into it helps, you know, when you are presented an opportunity just to, um, you know, realize what that is and just be, you know, get that hunger, you know, and, and motivation to, to land those those kinds of accounts. So it was a lot of work. I mean, I, I you know, I put a spreadsheet, there's like a hundred page, you know, spreadsheet working out all the different, you know, cleaning schedules and everything, all the equipment and, and all the stuff going into it. And just, I mean, it took like six months, you know, working on that and getting that bid and nailing it down. So, yeah, I think the, you know, like I said, the struggle, you know, helps feed the, the hunger and then helps you, <laughs> you know, get motivated. So, yeah. And you had mentioned too, we're not sure if we can hit, well, it's an all or nothing. So I'm sure then and there, once that was solidified, then you guys went out and got some employees to help completely make sure top to bottom, this place was spick and spam. Yeah. Yeah. We went from, you know, uh, uh, almost a hundred employees, you know, it was a huge, wow. hu huge account. We had to, it was a, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of legwork at that point, you know, we had some really good people helping us with like apartments and things, very, very motivated, uh, people, you know, um, th there's a really strong, uh, community, you know, my wife's from Guatemala. Uh, I speak more Spanish than I do English. There's a really, really cool, you know, strong, uh, Hispanic community that, that, that we have a lot of friends in. And so they were able just to, you know, pick up, you know, we divided it up in, into, to, um, you know, sub franchises, you know, and had, had uh, different people work different parts of the account. And, you know, we have a lot of really great uh, workers that made it possible. But yeah, it was, it was intense there for a minute. <laughs> During the intro, kind of teased at the top of the podcast, mentioned Forte mm -hmm. being in the national spotlight. And that is due to Forte giving opportunities to homeless people to work and focusing on inclusion. First, I want to applaud you guys for doing that. Um, obviously, it's a national crisis everywhere uh, in the United States uh, and your company's efforts for being so proactive. A lot of people say we want to be involved, and then sometimes they don't follow through. But you guys have and have been a huge benefit to your, to your community. When did you realize that there was a serious need to help give these people in the community just a chance, just a chance where 95% of employers would just turn and turn the other cheek and not even, not even give them an opportunity or a worry. Yeah. I mean, um, it was pre pretty early on. We started cleaning a large uh, event venue you know, a, a stadium where we needed a lot of, um, you know, a lot of bodies, a lot of uh, labor, you know, 100, 100 people around that per night after after some of the big events. And 
um, you know, j just trying to figure out how to staff that kind of led us into looking at some different options. Um, we started at first, you know, working, there was just a few people approached us that were, you know, struggling, experiencing some homelessness and they needed, needed to make some money. And so we, we, we let them, you know, really, you know, did, did, didn't see it as a, as a big deal, you know, hired them. Yeah. And then, um, but, but as we, you know, started, continued to work, you know, they started referring more people over and started kind of sharing with us, you know, their experiences. And so we, we really kind of started focusing on, on that. Um, you know, they, they have a hard time finding employment. Um, you know, we don't have an address and, and things like that. I don't have a place to shower and get ready and do interviews or resumes right. and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, and at that point we realized it was a really good kind of situation. If we can find the right people that are motivated and want to you know, get back on their feet because then they can use that as a reference, you know, mm -hmm. they can, you know, that paycheck, you know, they can start to uh, get into to, to more permanent housing and just do things, you know, really um, just that first step to get back on their feet. So, yeah. You give a lot of credit uh, to a book that you have read numerous times, uh, The Go-Giver. What did that book kind of teach you and open your eyes about giving back uh, and some of the biggest lessons that it taught you to take away. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, you know, back when I did real estate that my stepdad gave me that, that book, um, you know, sales, sales related, um, book about giving, you know, how giving helps you as a salesman, you know? And so it, it's just, yeah, it's all about just, 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 just giving, you know, trying to, to, to help people do what you can, you know, and, um, you know, it's just, it comes back and it helps you, you know, um, give more value in service, you know, than what you receive in payment is one of the big, um, you know, big things that, that it talks about. So I just, um, you know, something we've always tried to implement in our business model, you know, just give opportunities, you know, like we were given an opportunity, um, you know, to get into the business and, and, you know, bid on things, you know, people gave us opportunities. And so we just really want to, you know, try to give, give back when we can. And with the success working in the community, it's led to referrals from people, uh, from family and friends who are already working within the company that it's led you guys away from having to go to j recruiting and job sites like indeed.com so you guys mm -hmm. haven't had to go that route where speaking with a lot of different people on our podcast you know they'll have to go maybe let's say to indeed or a recruiting company to just get some help so you know word of mouth and just following through like you said is led to some tremendous referrals uh for you guys to be able to land top-notch talent yeah, honestly, I mean that that was very very surprising. You know, not not a, not really expected to be honest. But um, you know, we on for some events now. You know, we actually have to turn people away because so yeah. many people show up. But um, yeah, yeah, we don't. You know, we don't do any recruiting. We don't use Indeed at all. We tried it at, when we first started a little bit. Didn't have a lot of success with it, and just found by you know treating the employees, you know, right creating a good work environment as best we can, even though, you know, they, they could make more money a lot of times going somewhere else. A lot of times they'll go and then they'll come back. Cause they're like, man, I, I just like working here, you know, cause the, the group, you know, the environment, everything, you know, we try to try to have a good, you know, tight knit group of people. And, um, yeah, it's referrals, you know, get a lot of referrals whenever we have, whenever we get new accounts and, and kind of, staying true to your word too. Uh, a lot of people that m work in the commercial cleaning industry, maybe in the past have been looked down upon and prior employers maybe haven't fulfilled their responsibility in following through with their actions. Well, you guys, one of the things um, that is pretty awesome and it certainly caught my attention is you pay people daily when they work for you. And you know, especially in this under industry, this is 
really kind of the uh, revolutionary, really. Yeah, well, I mean, I just, you know, you do what you got to do. I feel like that really, people really appreciate that. So it, it was, um, you know, we with the background in commercial banking, um, you know, I have know of some creative options to, you know, kind of uh, financial, you know, financial wise, um, AR financing and things like that, that we can use to get money in the door, even though we're building our clients every 30 to 60 days, you know, we can get some money. Um, when we need it and then pay people as fast as we can and, 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 you know, make sure we always, you know, I, I was surprised that that's a pretty big thing when I first got into the industry, just making sure people get paid. And yeah. that's, that's, you know, it sounds pretty simple, but yeah, they, they, they love that. And that, I think that's a big um, reason as you know, to why they, they come back and refer other people. Yeah. It's crazy. I used to work in the recruiting industry and while well, I used to work here, they were shorting my pay. I wasn't getting these hours paid for. And I'm like, wow, that's just so head scratching. Cause it's something that, yeah. you know, I've never been exposed to where, you know, the, the, the check is hit the bank account. Right. Yeah. Um, so it is an interesting perspective to kind of put your shoes in and, and think about, but one of the big accounts you guys took over in 2019, the Delta Center, home of the Utah Jazz in 2019. Can we look a little bit into what goes on planning a proposal for a big venue like this and lining up all the people? You know, they play 83 games a season. Half of those are home games. So you got about 40, 41 home games. So that's 40 uh, plus nights where you need to fill 100 plus people there. Can you discuss that end of things? Yeah, and quite honestly, I mean, the jazz games are not the hardest. I mean, you know, we do the monster trucks and all the, you know, uh, Disney on Ice events nice. and all the events, concerts. Concerts are, are not bad, but, you know, you get the rodeos and monster trucks and stuff like that that is a lot more challenging to to clean up after. But um, it, it, it's been a work in progress. It still is, you know, a work in progress. There's always new challenges and things. Um we, when we started, you know, we started bringing about 10 people per night and it wasn't really, you know, with that, that amount of people, uh, we weren't really making any money, but I was actually there, you know, when we started it, I was, you know, boots on the ground there, figuring it out, trying to, to see how things worked, you know, talking to the managers and just, um, you know, trying to understand how, how, how the whole process in the building works. So little by little, you know, once we started to understand the different schedules and uh you know different um tasks that needed to be done you know cleaning the suites going down to the bathrooms even in the players that you know area down there in the high security areas um we've even had people help you know changing out the courts breaking up the ice after yep. disney on ice you know all that kind of stuff and so it was just uh you know, little by little, none of the other companies, you know, they just send people there because uh, they had a lot of companies and they just send people there blindly without even any supervisors or anything. But so I think it was just taking that time to kind of go in and really understand and find out how everything worked. And little by little, you know, now we're one of the only companies. They still have a few others, but we're definitely the largest, um, you know, with the most most people there at this point. Some new business owner listening to this episode here this month and they're trying to build their team build their talent and their culture based around inclusion what are some of the biggest pieces of advice that you would tell them right off the bat today to be successful pretty pretty basic stuff honestly i mean don't judge a book by its cover main probably one of the biggest things you know um give people a chance um especially if they're you know referral i think that helps a lot um we've had very very few issues you know with people that have come over on referrals so um you know find a space even if maybe you wouldn't have them work at a bank or something but there's accounts you know depending on the account there's definitely opportunities to you know employ i you know almost everybody it, it takes a lot i think to 
to not be employable at all. So yeah, I think just, just basically give, give people a chance. And some of these people that you have given opportunities to have been rather successful. I know I was watching the, uh, one of the news stations that picked up and did a, did a really nice feature on you guys. Um, but talked about one of your employees, joy, who, um, moved from Michigan to Utah was homeless you guys gave her an opportunity worked there purchased her own apartment you guys help her pay for you know uh furniture for her place when you see a kind of redemption story like that what does it do for you inside kind of your your heart and your chest what does it do for you to see kind of that redemption story uh come around yeah, I mean, obviously, it feels feels good, you know. It's 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 um, you know, it's a really good good feeling to to see that and and see see the system work, you know. Um, especially, uh, you know, going back to kind of my, you know, I was in school studying economics and things, and being involved in the business community, I always, you know, felt like, you know, um, through for profit you know, business, you know, businesses and corporations, business, business owners, you know, can, you know, have an impact. It doesn't have to just be charities and government, you know, and stuff like that, right. but actually for profit um, businesses, you know, can, can do things to have um, social impact. So it's kind of nice to see that that is possible sometimes. So. <laughs> and along with creating those new beginnings for people, um, you're helping them gain skills to build in a resume because sometimes after they've got that experience, it is time for them to kind of move on. And uh, what is it like to be able to give people those skills too? Uh, you've had several people who have come work for you guys uh, that have been uh, off the streets that now are, you know, had success with you guys, built that resume up, and we're able to go outside and continue their career path, whatever that might be. Um, that's got to feel pretty, pretty special overall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the, that's the goal, you know, to, to just be more of a, a stepping stone or, you know, if there are opportunities to grow within the company too, you know, that that's another great uh, thing to ha- happen. And, but yeah, that, that's the ideal outcome you know to have some kind of progression and move on to something better and you guys have some other exciting things coming up i know you guys were uh, when we talked kind of looking on locking down another big contract i know you said sometimes you got to turn away some people but if if this one happens i don't think you're going to have to turn away uh, anybody uh, from from work at all in the future yeah that's that honestly that that's the that's the that's the struggle. Find enough work to keep everybody busy, you know, just keep finding, finding more, more things and, um, continue to grow and keep, uh, you know, keep trying to find more, more opportunities and provide as many opportunities as we can. So we're happy, you know, whenever we get a chance to do that. How do you continue to challenge yourself? Um, you know, I'm sure your goal of being in this industry uh, for yourself as a, as a person has changed probably a handful, a dozen times where, okay, we can check this one off, check this off. So for you with being so successful with your company, how do you continue to, to raise your expectations, to raise your goals as well? Yeah. I, 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 you know, just, just having those goals set continuously setting you know, new goals, um, working to achieve them, you know, right now we're, I'm working on some stuff to expand, you know, we've really been focused just on the Utah market. We're looking on expanding, you know, the operations to other markets. And there's so many, so many opportunities. It's, you know, it's almost unlimited, you know, opportunities available. So I don't think we'll ever run out of, you know, right. uh, goals to set and just keep on, keep on pushing. Yeah. And the forecast for the industry, nothing but sunny skies right now and forward right. as well. 
Jason, I want to thank you coming on this month's episode and discussing inclusion and so many valuable topics to our listeners. How can people find your guys' website and along with following you guys on social media? Um, yeah, Fort, ForteCommercialCleaning.com. It's kind of a long one, but, uh, you know, Google Forte Commercial Cleaning, you know, you'll see all of our, all of our stuff. We're actively working on being better at social media. So here in the next coming months, you should see, we're even, um, you know, possibly going to start a YouTube channel. So we're, okay. awesome. we're that's all in the works. <laughs> all right. We'll look forward to kind of tracking that progress. And uh, thank you again for coming on here. That will conclude this month's episode of the Business of Cleaning Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast from. From everyone at Janitorial Manager, our guest for this month, Jason Davis. I'm Tim Clagg saying so long until next time.